I'd like to take you to a scene. So if you would, close your eyes and just help me out by doing that, and we'll be able to envision this a little easier. Thank you, you. Imagine with me that you are present at the crucifixion of Jesus. It's an extremely bright and hot day. You're standing some distance from the whole scene, maybe in the exact spot where Mary Magdalene stood as she watched in horror the nailing of her friend to beams of wood. From your vantage point, you see everything as it unfolds in time. Roman soldiers quickly prepare three men to hang from crosses. Pharisees and scribes pace back and forth like the vultures circling in the air above, preparing to hurl their premeditated curses at the king of the Jews. And suddenly, without warning, day turns to night. A sense of dread overwhelms you, and you wonder to yourself, what is happening here? For three hours, you wait with the group of women that has recently formed, and you watch. Just watch. Thank you. Mark 15, 34 to 35 says this. At 3 o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, listen, he's calling for Elijah. There are three people there, three types of people there at the scene that day. There was the bystanders, there was the Pharisees and the, the scribes, the teachers of the law, and there was the Roman soldiers, most importantly the centurion, the, the commander of those soldiers. I want to look today briefly at the response that these three types of people gave to Christ on the cross. The bystanders, what was their response to Christ? Now the bystanders would have been anybody walking towards the city or away from the city on the road next to the, the hill of the skull, Gol Golgotha. Or they could have just been people that wanted to come and watch a cruci crucifixion. They must have understood his words. They thought he was calling for Elijah. Now there was a segment of the Jews who believed that Elijah's job was to help great teachers in their time of need. So they would have been watching for Elijah. However, I think most of them were mocking Christ by saying those words. They understood what he said. The Pharisees and scribes, these were the Jews, these were the teachers, these were the uh, followers of the law. What was their response to Jesus? They repetitively said, he's calling for Elijah. I think of children on a playground mocking another child that's weaker than them. He's calling for Elijah, he's calling for Elijah. And then they would have thought of Psalm 22, 8, that says, He trusts in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him, for he delights in him. So a sense of irony there. Because he did trust in the Lord. And there was a deliverance. The centurion. You're all familiar with the scripture at the end of 1533 to, to 41, where the centurion stands there and he says, surely this must be God's son. What was his response? He was impressed by the words of Christ, not only his words, but his actions from the cross, the actions of the people around him. How do we apply this? So what do we do about this? Is our response going to be that of mocking Christ? Is our response going to be that of praising our Lord as Psalms 22 ends in praise and salvation? Are we going to affirm by faith 
that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, as the centurion did. Jesus still speaks to us today, doesn't he? He desires us to hear him, so he speaks loudly and clearly. It's imperative that we listen to his, his voice and affirm to the world that he is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus wants us to know that he sees our suffering, empathizes with us, and desires to lead us through our suffering. To kneel at the foot of the cross and lay down our burdens there. This brings us into the great and marvelous light. Henry Blackaby, best known for experiencing God, said, What you do in response to God's revelation reveals what you believe about God. So the response of the Pharisees, they saw his miracles, they heard his teachings, and yet their response was not that of a believing individual. The response of the bystanders, a mocking response, except for the one person who ran and got the vinegar and put the sponge up. And he says, leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes. And the response of the centurion, that of impression, of respect and admiration, not maybe fully realizing that he was truly the son of Jehovah, God, but at the very least, God's son. Again, Blackaby said, so what do you do in response to God's revelation reveals what you believe about God? So I leave you with that question. How will you respond to Christ today?